Let's take a look at how you can do long division of polynomials using a more visual method known as the box method among many of my students. To begin, let's just do a quick review of how we could multiply polynomials. Since division is just the reverse operation, sometimes it helps to look at the original. So let's look at how we'd multiply these two polynomials using the box method. We are going to draw ourselves a box and there will be one position for each term of the first polynomial, one position for each term of the second polynomial. By position, I'm talking about having a place to put them, which would be columns and rows. So I'm going to make a box that has four columns and two rows. And there it is. And I place all of the terms underneath or next to one of their spots, so in their position. So here's the 4x cubed minus 2x squared plus 7x minus 3. Here's the x and the minus 9. Now just like a good old-fashioned multiplication chart, I'm just going to fill in each of these boxes by multiplying whatever is in that box's row and column position. So this first corner box is going to be 4x cubed times x. This top box up here is 4x cubed times negative 9, and so on to fill in the rest of the box. If you'd like to, you can go ahead and pause right now and fill in your own box and then check to see if you got it. So here we go. There's the end result. All of the boxes are filled in with some pretty colors. So now to get the final polynomial product, what I need to do is take all of these terms and combine like terms and write them in descending order. You're going to notice my like terms seem to be lining up along the diagonals. So here we go. We just went ahead and added all our like terms and wrote our polynomial in descending order from highest degree x to the fourth down to lowest degree constant of 27. Well, to divide polynomials, we're pretty much going to reverse this process. With multiplication, we had the outsides, we filled in the insides. For division, we're going to have part of the outside and the insides what we're going to have to fill out is this part down here. And of course this box is pretty because these, once multiplied, are factors of this final answer. There'd be no remainder if I divided this polynomial by x minus 9. So now let's look at division. Here's a polynomial we're going to divide by x plus 3. Now because that is a linear binomial with an x coefficient of 1, it means that I could use synthetic division. So let's do synthetic division because it helps to see what the final answer should be when you look at the box method. So of course when we do synthetic division we write all of our coefficients in descending order of the original polynomial across the top. We do the opposite of this plus 3 because when we're doing division this is actually a root of the polynomial which having come from this factor would have been x plus 3 equals 0, hence the negative 3. So now we're going to do our lovely synthetic division. If you know synthetic division, go ahead and pause and complete it. All right, here we go. Drop down the 2, multiply. Add those two together, multiply here. Add those two together, multiply here. Add, and add those two together and multiply and add down. Of course, we know when we do synthetic division that what we have here are coefficients. These are the coefficients of the final answer, starting with one degree lower than the original dividend. And then this little term over here is going to be our remainder. So let's write out the answer. 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus 12x minus 32 plus a remainder of 90 out of, a, out of an x plus 3. So now that we know this answer, let's look at how we could have used a box to get to this. So what I'm going to do is draw a box. And you notice that over here, the box is sort of unfinished. I'm not really sure how many columns I may end up needing, so I'm just going to leave it there. Here's the x and the plus 3, as if this had originally been a multiplication problem, because x plus 3 times something gave me this polynomial. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to divide with the box. Here's how it works. My first step is to take my first term and put it in this box. Because from up above, I remember, this corner was my highest degree term. So there it is. Now, what I need to do is fill in. What must have been down here 
so that when I multiply these two, I got 2x to the fourth. Well, that'd be 2x cubed, of course. So I'm going to write that here. Now that it's written here, I'm going to fill in this top box by multiplying, just like I did before. It's going to be 2x cubed times 3. And there it is. Now, here's where we get into the trick. So far, we haven't done a whole lot. The trick is, we know from the box that these diagonals are going to be like terms. We know from this final answer that these two terms must add to x cubed. So what has to go in here so that when I add these, I get x cubed? That would be negative 5x cubed. These will produce that answer once dumped out. Okay, now same thing we did here. If that says negative 5x cubed, what has to go here to have made that multiplication work? Well, negative 5x squared, of course. And now that we have that, let's complete the top box by multiplying the column and row terms. That's negative 15x squared. Okay, let's start the process again. I know that these two diagonals had to add to negative 3x squared. So what has to go in this box so that when I add them, I get negative 3x squared? That would be 12x squared. So now that I have that, I need to complete this bottom term, what multiplied to x to produce that. That would have been 12x. Now that I have that term, let's complete this upper box by multiplication. There we go. Okay, here we go again. These two diagonal boxes had to add to a positive 4x. So what has to go in here to make them add to 4x? That would be negative 32x. Now that I have negative 32x, what has to go here to have made that work? That'd be negative 32. Now that I have that, let's complete this top box. And we get negative 96. Now, we have reached the end of the ability to do this anymore, and here's why. Take a look at this. This is a constant down here. That means that the next thing here is a constant term. There is nothing in the world of polynomials that I can multiply to an x to produce a constant. So once you get a constant here in this lower section, you are done with the main division. That means that anything after that becomes remainder. So I'm going to put an R over this column because this is going to be my remainder column. At this point, I look at every term I have not yet dealt with and I have to adjust. So I had a constant of negative 6. What had to be here so that these two would have added to negative 6? That would be 90. Now, nothing goes here because there is nothing I can multiply to x to make 90. This is my remainder. So here is my answer, here is my remainder. So I'll just write it out. 2x cubed, 5x squared, 12x minus 32, 90 over x plus 3. Wow, that looks familiar. Now you might say, why would I ever bother with this box when obviously synthetic division was faster? You are right. The reason we did it here was more as a training exercise. I wanted you to see the process on something simple and something for which we already knew the answer so that you could see you did it right. Let's take a look at another problem. See, this problem here with this polynomial, we're dividing by a quadratic trinomial. We know synthetic division cannot be done when you have a quadratic trinomial as your divisor. So let's see how this would work in our new box approach. So I'm gonna draw a box. Since I'm dividing by a trinomial, my box has three rows, and I started a whole bunch of columns not knowing how many I'm going to need later on. So now, let's do the process. The first term goes in the corner. Now I say, what do I have to multiply to an x squared to make a negative 3x to the sixth turn out? That's negative 3x to the fourth. Now I'm going to complete the other two rows. So take a look at the other two rows and see how everything uh, filled in. Okay, 
So next up, I know that these two diagonals have to add to negative 7x to the fifth. So the only thing I can put here is negative 10x to the fifth. So now think about what has to go down here to have made that multiplication happen. And then whatever's down here is going to complete the two boxes above by multiplying with the two uh, row terms. If you'd like to try filling it out on your own, feel free to pause and then see if you're right. So of course I'd need a negative 10x to the third to make that work. So that becomes 10x to the fourth and 10x to the third. So now I have three boxes on the next diagonal. These three will have to add to the x to the fourth term in the original polynomial. Ah, but there was no x to the fourth term in the original polynomial. That's okay. It just means that when these added up, they were zero. Well, currently I have 13 x to the fourths. So think about what would have to be here to make them add to zero. Why negative 13 x to the fourth, of course. So now think about what would have to go here to make this multiplication work. It's really almost like solving a giant puzzle, which makes it kind of fun. Well, that would have been negative 13x squared, and then I filled in my other two multiplications. Here we go again. These three diagonals right here, boom, 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 had to add to a 1x to the third. Well, I have 23x to the third right now, so what has to go there to make them add to 1. That would be negative 22x to the third. All right, so what would have to multiply to an x squared to make that happen? And then go ahead and multiply that answer up the chain. There it is. Okay, next up, these three diagonals have to add to a positive 2x squared. So I currently have 35x squareds here what would have to go in this corner to make them add to 2x squared? That would be negative 33x squared. So now what would have to go here to make that multiplication work? And then move the multiplication up the column. That'd be a negative 33. And now, like before, remember, soon as I hit a constant right here, I'm done with the whole what adds and, and makes these terms. Everything at this point becomes remainder. So here's how we're going to fill in the remainder column. I'm going to keep going. I know that these three boxes have to add to my x term, which in this problem is a 0x. So I have 55 x's right now. I need something here that will cancel those out. By that same logic, I know that these two because this is the remainder column, my box is done, these two are going to have to add to this constant of 8 that I still hadn't dealt with. So I fill that in. Well, here it is. There's the final answer, and there's the remainder. So we'll write it out. Negative 3x to the fourth, minus 10x to the third, minus 13x squared, minus 22x, minus 33, plus a remainder of negative 55x minus 25 over x squared minus x minus 1. Now, if you have a teacher that likes to just write r for remainder, remainder negative 5x minus 25, then that's how you'd write it. So you might be saying, well, yeah, that, that seemed like a lot of fun and certainly took up only about a third of a piece of paper, but is it correct? Well, the only way to test that is, of course, we'd have to do this whole original problem by long division. So let's do it. Here's the original problem. So I start by figuring out what multiplies to x squared to make negative 3x to the 6, multiply it through, change all the signs, add down, drop down my next term. What multiplies to x squared to get negative 10x to the 5th? There it is. Multiply through, change all the signs, add down, drop down the next term. What multiplies to x squared to make negative 13x to the 4th? There it is. Distribute it through, little mistake there. Change all the signs, add down, drop down the next term. What has to multiply to get there? That's negative uh, 22x. Distribute it through, 
change all the signs, add down, drop down the 8. What has to multiply to make that? That's negative 33. Distribute that through, change all the signs, add down, and there's our final answer. That took about half a page or more. And in the process, you risked all kinds of mistakes because of all those times you had to do that change signs add or subtract, as you may have been told. But now let's compare this to our box method. Oh, look, there's the box method getting me the answer. Here's long division to the same answer. Hmm. Seems like this is a little more compact and efficient, and you run a little bit less risk of dropping negative signs through that whole messy process. Okay, so now that you've seen it, why don't you try one on your own? See if you can complete this division problem using the box. When you're done, you can check to see the answer. So pause my video now. Well, here we go. Back for the answer. Here's my box, and there's my final answer. Did it work? If so, well done. Be excited. If not, check each of the little entries here in the box. See if you can track where a mistake may have happened. I'm willing to bet the first thing to check are all your positive and negative signs. That's usually the mistake people make. The second thing you might want to check is a multiplication. You might have been going so fast that when you did something like 6 times 4, you may have written 20. Just because you were going so quick, you just weren't thinking. So double check all of those. The third place to look for mistakes would be as you filled in this bottom row, adding up what you had and making sure that the result added to the term here. That's usually where the other mistakes occur. So that's how you do it. Of course, like any of these problems, it can get messier. Uh, for example, let me give you another one. Don't try this one on your own unless you really want to. We're going to go ahead and divide a big old poly by something with a coefficient. If you've done this before by long division, you know as soon as you put a coefficient on your leading term, you run the risk of all kinds of fractions, especially if you have coefficients like this. We have an even coefficient, and this is an odd. So things could go very wrong. The thing is that the box helps that organization. It just takes a while. So if you really want to try this by the box, be warned, the fractions get a little crazy. If not, you can go ahead and, and let things play, and I can show you what the answer was. Uh, so there's the messy answer. You'll see lots of fractions. And over here, I had to do a little side math. When it came time to fill in for these last two in the remainder column, the fractions were getting a little out of control. So I did a little math over here. 21 over 2x plus 41 over 8x plus whatever this box was had to equal the 2x. So you can see I kind of solved a little equation. I multiplied through by 8 to clear the denominators and then got my answer and put it in. And then same for the remainder column. So I can build my final answer. And if you're someone where it's okay to leave fractions in fractions, you could leave it like this first answer. If indeed you have a need to not allow your remainder to be some kind of complex fraction, what you can do is multiply the remainder fraction by 8 over 8. Doing so is still multiplying by 1, which is valid, but will eliminate all the fractions. We can't multiply this polynomial by anything to clear denominators because it is not a fraction, nor is this an equation. So this is a done deal. Can't do anything about it. That concludes our video on solving long division using the box method. I hope you found it interesting and something you can use in the future.